Roe versus Wade, Revolution, Reaction, and Reform in History Every day, nearly 500,000 babies are brought into the world. Also, 115,000 abortions are carried out daily. These abortions can be very beneficial to the parent because they cannot otherwise provide for their child. However, there have been many pro-life groups that claim that no matter how necessary an abortion might seem, it is still a violation of basic human rights to life. This long-standing argument stems from the Supreme Court ruling of Roe v. Wade, one of the most controversial cases that the Supreme Court has ever ruled. The root of this monumental decision started in the Texas city of Dallas, where Norma McCorvey, a woman of 22 years, wanted to have an abortion. However, the stringent Texas laws involving abortion made it very difficult to have one legally. She filed a suit in the U.S. District Court of Texas claiming that the anti-abortion laws were in violation of the Ninth Amendment. Norma McCorvey was born on September 22, 1947, and raised in Houston, Texas. She had a very tough life and had to deal with alcoholic parents. When she was only 13, her father left her, and at 14, she dropped out of high school. During her teenage years, she suffered rape and physical beatings from her husband, Woody McCorvey. After moving in with her mother, she raised her first child, Melissa. However, catastrophe struck when her mother disowned her when she revealed that she was a lesbian. McCorvey left her mother and lived the next few years with low-wage jobs such as bartending. So what exactly is an abortion? An abortion is the termination of pregnancy by the removal of the fetus from the uterus. They are usually carried out because the mother does not think that she can provide properly for her child. According to Abortion No, 83% of all abortions are obtained in developing countries, and 70% occur in developed countries. 42 million abortions are performed each year, and 20 million of these are unsafe abortions, with a chance of harming the mother. However, abortion in a proper clinic and in proper conditions is one of the safest procedures for the patient in modern medicine. The alarming number of underground abortions is mainly due to the strict abortion laws in place. Laws like the one that prompted Norma McCorvey to file a suit. But in 1969, McCorvey was pregnant for the third time. Due to her anxiety and depression, she pursued an abortion under the false pretense that she was raped, which allowed for a legal abortion in the state of Texas. However, the lack of evidence prevented her from obtaining an abortion. Thus, she resolved to get help from two aspiring lawyers, Linda Coffey and Sarah Weddington. Under the pseudonym Jane Rowe, in order to protect her privacy, she filed a case in the Dallas District County. The court ruled in her favor, but on appeal, this case moved to the Supreme Court. Eventually, the case left McCorvey's hands and reached the Supreme Court in 1970. The Supreme Court, on their part, delayed the case due to the fact that they had to tie up loose ends in other abortion-related cases, such as United States v. Vittich and Younger v. Harris. The case's first argument took place on December 13, 1971. The unanimous but nevertheless tentative decision absolved that the prevailing abortion law should be struck down. But, Justice Harry Blackman, who was assigned to record the decision, felt that his draft was an inadequate reflection of the other judges' opinions. He suggested that the case be re-argued, and on October 11, 1972, it was. The Supreme Court eventually decided that abortion was a fundamental right under the Constitution, and more specifically protected under the Due Process Clause in the 14th Amendment, which was decided to extend to abortion. After the case ruling in 1973, abortions increased from 16.3 per 1,000 women to 29.3 per 1,000 women in 1981. Additionally, the ruling of Roe v. Wade affected other cases, such as Planned Parenthood v. Casey which ruled that states have the right to enact restrictions that do not create an undue burden to women seeking abortion. The decision allowed for states to impose waiting periods and parental notification requirements. The Roe v. Wade decision also affected stem cell research. Government funding has been stopped for all stem cell research, and bans have been placed on creation of embryos for research. These new bans prevent research in cloning as well, a field that could help regenerate human organs and help cure cancer. Meanwhile, McCorvey was undergoing significant changes in her life. In 1994, Reverend Philip Benham met McCorvey at a book signing. Half a year later, he opened an Operation Rescue, a pro-life organization, headquarters next to the pro-choice clinic where McCorvey worked at, a choice for women. After slowly becoming friends with Benham, McCorvey was invited to Reverend Benham's church, 
and within a year she converted to Christianity and was baptized. Ever since then, she has been part of the pro-life movement and wanted to reverse the Roe v. Wade decision. For what reasons then did this ruling become so monumental? The fundamental underlying issue in this case was the choice for life. Many advocacy groups such as Operation Rescue, National Right to Life, and Catholic Pro-Life Committee claim that ending a fetus's life was the equivalent of murder. They argue that birth begins at fertilization, and thus, both the parent and the doctor who performed the abortion are gu guilty of homicide. Dr. Bernard Nathanson, one of the founders of NARAL, who later became pro-life, said, I am deeply troubled by my own increasing certainty that I have in fact presided over 60,000 deaths. There is no longer a serious doubt in my mind that human life exists from the very onset of pregnancy. On the flip side, there are many pro-choice groups like Planned Parenthood and NARO who say it should be the mother's choice whether or not to conduct an abortion. They claim that life begins at birth and consequently abortion is not murder. Ayn Rand, an influential female author, once said, One method of destroying a concept is by diluting its meaning. Observe that by ascribing rights to the unborn, the non-living, the anti-abortionists obliterate the rights of the living. The Hyde Amendment was the legislative provision barring the use of certain federal funds to pay for abortions and was put into effect in response to Roe v. Wade. This represented the first achievement for anti-abortion by cutting off Medicaid funds for abortions. As a result, some states tried to provide public funding for abortion services. The Roe v. Wade resulted in strong negative reactions, even violence. For example, due to conflicts over the court ruling, there have been reports of vandalism, arson, bombing on clinics, and assault. For example, on December 25, 1984, the American Family Planning Clinic and two physicians' offices in Pensacola, Florida were bombed. According to the National Abortion Federation, there have been at least 17 attempted murders, 282 death threats, 153 incidents of assault or battery, and three kidnappings committed against abortion providers since 1977. The violence, however, is not limited to attacks on pro-choice groups. According to Cho Newman, the president of Operation Rescue, his organization has seen a dramatic increase in the number of death threats since Obama took office in 2008. These widespread threats and violent incidents demonstrate the polarizing effects created by the Roe v. Wade decision. The following clip is from an interview with J.T. Finn, the president of Pro-Life America. The battle over abortion is a huge battle because it's about murder. I've met with and spoken to and interviewed over 200 women who share their devastating stories about how they were hurt and deeply, deeply regret their abortions. There are different ways that they're injured. Some is psychological, emotional, some is physical. Um, I've worked with a doctor who's interviewed over 250 women. Of, of the women that he interviewed, 28% of them actually attempted suicide. Uh, we hear from many women who have been sterilized because of their abortion. The instrument punctured their uterus or it damaged their cervix. So there are many ways that women are harmed by abortion. The following clip is from Nancy Keenan speaking at the 2008 Democratic National Convention. We support and defend a woman's right to choose a safe, legal abortion. We believe we can and should do more while still protecting the fundamental values of freedom and privacy. On the other side, there's John McCain, who has voted to ban abortion with no exceptions for the victims of incest or rape and has embraced outlawing abortions in all cases. How is it moral to vote to eliminate a family planning program that provides millions of low-income women with access to birth control? These questions matter as this coincides with the 35th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. The Roe v. Wade Supreme Court decision was a major decision in U.S. history. It paved the way for innumerable arguments and conflict. It has divided people into two irreconcilable groups that both have strong opinions concerning abortion. The controversy will result in conflict for decades to come, but Roe v. Wade has changed the life of thousands if not millions of people. Whether or not it was beneficial or harmful, it is up for you to decide.